Hello, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. First of all, thank you for being here and listening to, to my presentation. And I would like to say it's a great honor to give a presentation for such an esteemed organization and uh, in this conference for Apache. So today's topic of discussion, as you can see from the screen, is thread level average statistics. My name is Mehmet Singh, and let's just get into this. So a brief summary about me. I'm a software engineer at Cloudera, and um, ever since my internship and my full time, I've been working in the Cloud Connectors team for the past two years. Uh, and this was the head start for my career, and I couldn't have asked anything better. It is a pleasure to work here, and I've loved every second of it here. So in these past two years, I've actively worked in the open source Apache Hadoop uh, community as a contributor. And if you're using S3 or ABFS connector, that is primarily where I work. So um, let's just get into the agenda then. So third level IO statistics. So we are going to get into IO statistics. What is the per third IO statistics? What is the usages and present and future work? So for IO statistics, let's just go back to the legacy statistics and how they were used. So Earlier, we used to have simple counters for byte thread and written, etc., like in the file system itself. And we used to have some thread level statistics for those uh, legacy statistics. So Steve Rofferin came up with this IO statistics as a framework of metrics where we show a wide variety, not just limiting ourselves to counters, but counters, gauges, max, means, and means to track the duration of certain requests and to see if is there some spikes in these requests or not. So how this IO statistics was used earlier in like in the beginning is simply in the close for the file system, we can see there is a dump of uh, IO stats and it's a huge amount of data that we can use to then figure out what is happening in the job. So with IO statistics, what, what it gave us is a really in-depth view of the jobs which the legacy counters really didn't. So this made a huge improvement in uh, figuring out if the performance improvements that we made were actually successful or not. If the, the amount of data that we want to read has been successfully done or not. If so, so, so on, so on, we can go on with our statistics that its importance is huge now in Apache Hadoop. So, Continuing in IOS statistics itself, it has a very unique ability to take a snapshot of the current IOS statistics at, at one point. So why this was helpful is it uh, for this particular project is that in thread level IOS statistics, we kind of rely that on the fact that after reading a certain uh, bit of IOS stats and aggregating them, we can take a snapshot whenever we want. This snapshot is serializable. So it gives us the ability to either store the data or just transmit the stats somewhere we want and use it however we like. And this just gives us a lot of opportunity and choices to play with the IO stats. So in IO stats currently for Hive and Spark jobs, how this is used is basically for the entire query or an entire job. We dump the IO stats for the whole file system at the end, like we do for any shell command, etc. This is particularly done in the file system close. Now, this IO statistics, what it really needed was a way to collect worker threads IO stats. And why that is really important was to really show for, for a job in certain tasks what is actually happening. And with the help of IO stats, we used to see what is happening in the whole file system really well. But what was really needed was the thread level collection of these IO stats and printing of these. So that is that was the whole problem statement for this project. And that gave the rise to the per thread IO stats collection. So this is an experimental feature in the sense that it just came out. So we do have a toggle to enable or disable this feature at our will. And dis disabling this feature would give uh, not just a null value, but it would give Another kind of implementation to the IO statistics uh, per thread is that it is going to give us an empty IO statistics, which would work normally. It will have like an empty maps for all these counters and the aggregation would be a no-op. So it just helps us 
like in the later on in the code as well. So what is actually happening in this third level of statistics is that we're going to have context. For the context, what that means is for each worker thread and uh, each worker thread that we have in these uh, jobs, each would have a IO statistics context to it. And each IO statistics context would then again have some IO statistics snapshots. Why that is really important is that we would get into depth in IO statistics snapshot, but to just give a gist of it, it really makes our life easier to reset aggregate for each worker thread. Um, and yeah, that is actually what we would be doing for the execution cycle in applications such as Spark. And uh, what IO per thread IO statistics is actually doing is, it's not creating some new counters or metrics. It's actually using the already placed IO statistics and aggregating them on a thread level basics. So why that is really important to note is that our work is really simple once we capture the context. For each thread, what we need to do is capture the context in the constructor, aggregate them in the close. So that process becomes really simpler, but what we end up with is a thread maps of IOSTATS context, each containing some snapshot that we can use and say, here's the job, here's the worker threads work, you can use however you like. So this becomes really important in the sense that for any throttling kind of situations, we could know which worker thread was to blame. So uh, how, uh, so taking on that note in Spark, this is what we are actually doing is that for each IO thread, for each worker thread's work, we have this per thread IO statistics snapshot available. And why that is really important is that since this snapshot is serializable, we can use it however we like in Spark. We can store it, we can transmit it however we want. So I'll look into it. It's a really high level uh, design of what we are actually doing. So in each worker thread, we have different context. So these are IO statistics context for each worker thread. And each of these contains an aggregator that is an IO statistics snapshot. So for all the work that is done in a worker thread, this IO statistics snapshot is going to record this work, keep on aggregating it, and at the end of this task cycle, take a snapshot of it and store it and use it however we like. So for each worker thread, we're going to have a IO statistics snapshot ready for us to be used. Hence, we would have a thread level IO statistics. So IO statistics snapshot, what is it is and why is it so important is that this is a method, this is a class in IO statistics itself, which, uh, which is an implementation of the IO statistics aggregator. And why that is really important is that since this IO statistics is a wide variety of metrics, not just counters, it contains maps for all the counters, min, max, mean, and gauges. And every bit of this requires different level of aggregation. And that is already set up in, in the IO statistics snapshot. So this becomes really easy and it really lines up for the thread level work that we wanted to do. Now the ability to serialize comes really handy in, in applications like Spark, etc. that we can use the serializability of the IO statistics snapshot to capture the snapshot and then just use that data however we like. Either we can dump it, show it in the app UI, endless opportunities. Now in IO statistics snapshot, we also have the ability to reset. Now why that is really important is that Imagine in, in the task and in the job itself, we have this worker thread that is working on this particular task. And we know this is the worker threads work for this task. If a new task comes up with the same, requiring the same worker thread, now we are actually aggregating the old work as well. That is actually what we don't want. So for each execution cycle in an application, it's really important to reset these stats and to aggregate them at the proper points. Um, okay, so how to use this thread level IO statistics? That's the main key question. At the moment, we are working in Hive, Spark, and S3 committers for the usages of it. So for Hive, it's pretty simple. You have certain queries that requires and that uses these, um, these streams of file system or uses the S3 committers. 
Ayush statistics, third level Ayush statistics is already set up in those. What Hive needs to just do is it's just dump them at the end of task. So why that would be really helpful is we know we will get a lot of logs and we can just simply grab for the each thread and just see, okay, the task ended. We can see the summary of the task. So this really gives us a good picture for each task. After it ends, you throw, you dump an IO statistics at the thread level. So that, re that really helps in the way that for each job, you can see each thread worker threads work and you can figure it out if uh, what kind of troubleshooting you need to do for the job. So for Spark, it's pretty simple. It's like it's uh, similar to what we're doing in Hive, but in the sense that Spark becomes really complicated because it does the reading and writing and the reading and writing will get into depth with wiring up and Spark later on. But to just give you a high level design is that Spark already has some statistics known as task metrics. So these task metrics also rely on some sort of third level uh, collection. And our work is going to be to add this IO statistics snapshot as, as another variable into the task metrics. So what that would do is the way task metric is getting aggregated, we can use the same with the IO statistics snapshot. And as I earlier told you, in IO statistics snapshot, the 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 ability to do do the aggregation comes really handy. Okay, now coming to the S three committer, since the this project was mainly done in Hadoop Common and S three A, so working it in into S three A committers as well as manifest committers was really important. So in committers, what we do have is at the end of a job we have a success file. So what the success file really tells us is a summary for the job. Now, getting the IO stats and thread level IO statistics after the aggregation, even the aggregation for the manifest, reading of the manifest files in the committer also generates some statistics that we need to aggregate. And that's going to be done using the context itself. And that we can use to showcase in the success file. So after every job, we can see the success file giving us a summary of the IO stats that we really needed. So for some formats like Iceberg, we don't really create the success file. So in those scenarios, what we could really do is show these IO statistics in the app UI itself. That would really help for Now, the cleanup of thread maps. Now, I've talked about uh, creating these many contexts for each worker thread. Now, a question arises is that uh, in in high scale job environment where you have so many worker threads, doesn't your memory leakage happens due to long lived references to tackle that issue? We are using weak reference thread maps. Now, what does weak reference thread map mean here is that we are having a weak reference of the IO statistics snapshot for each context. And this context would be lost after the garbage collection is kicked. Now, that is also a kind of problem. We don't want to lose our st IO statistics in the process of garbage collection. But how we overcome that problem is the ability to, to take a snapshot. That really comes in handy because after the execution cycle is end, we can take the snapshot, use that data of IO statistics data however we want. We want to store it, transmit it, but we have this data. We don't really care if this reference is now even lost. Because at the end of the execution cycle, when we do had the reference, we took a snapshot. Okay, so coming to the sample thread uh, of um, thread level IO statistics, it's pretty straightforward. This is the dump of IO statistics for a very basic read operation. Now, why is it really important to see here is that this showcases the vast difference between the legacy statistics and the IO statistics. Now we can see in depth of what we are actually doing in the input stream, which we earlier didn't have. We can see the duration of a get call. We can see the minimum of this get call, the maximum and, and even the mean of it so that we can figure it out if this these calls are taking way too long than they should. This gives us a new dimension into the uh, Hadoop world so that we can make strategic performance improvements as we want. 
so this comes really handy in even telling us if our improvements really were helpful or not we can see stream bytes data that were discarded in close that really helpful in the sense that we can see if we are really discarding a lot of data maybe we need to optimize the read a little bit so this is just a raw uh, raw kind of i start snapshot even you could say of the s3 input stream of a basic read operation for for one thread now coming back to wiring up in spark and how we kind of tackled that issue was so spark is a little complicated in the sense that uh, it does the reading and writing but the issue with that like collecting and aggregating there the issue is the correctness now how spark is reading and writing is it may require one single thread to read and write which could cause correctness in the sense that it's going to either double count the metrics or either it's going to reset at a at a wrong position that is something that we need to avoid and knowing where the best place is uh, to get the context aggregate and reset it is really important in an application so we found out that the run task method for a spark job is really the place to actually collect the the io statistics at the thread level for the worker threads and we are actually going to we are doing a poc for this currently and uh, for spark in showing showcasing that for each worker thread we can aggregate reset and at the end take a snapshot of this io statistics for each worker thread in spark so now using the io statistics uh, thread level io statistics in spark is actually a good question because this few ways we can do that either we print it at the end of the spark in the spark logs itself or we can even show it showcase this in the app ui or we can do both so that comes down to really talking with the spark people and understanding how they really want to use this data since this is really important data they can use it however they want even in the app ui itself where we showcase the task metrics that i earlier talk about that they had uh, already placed in the spark itself they showcase one counters for reading writing etc what we could show is the whole io statistics snapshot for this worker thread showcase that whole statistics that just add so many metrics and gauges that it would be really helpful for a job so integrating with s3 committers was a really big task in the sense that we are implementing uh, it first in s3 connectors so implementing this with s3 committers and even the manifest committer that uh, that just recently came out is also really important so for committers it 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 is the really tricky uh, tricky in the sense that for applications that use the committers you know that the resetting of the i o statistics is going to take place at the execution cycle in the application but if we reset it again in the committer then that would mess things up so it was really important to understand how the integration of s3 committers in thread level io stats is going to work so we are measuring the io for the whole job commit and uh, we are also including this in the summary statistics so what we also do in the committers is we read some manifest files and these manifest file also have these certain statistics for themselves as well so getting the context there the current context as a static uh, static um, variable really helps in the case that we can get this current statistics for the current uh, io statistics context for this particular worker thread aggregate everything and at the end just reset that so that we don't double count it and that is how in the s3 committers itself we are also going to use the io statistics context to actually count and aggregate the the metrics so this all uh, our statistics uh, at the end for the job in the job commit is going to be loaded into the success file itself so the way i also described success file earlier was basically it's a way to summarize this whole job so that really comes in the hand uh, as that we are completing this job at the end we are getting the success file which is just a summary of this task and we are also printing the io stats here so the io stats here really would become helpful in the case of troubleshooting a particular job now the current status for this pr is is that the implementation in hadoop and s3 is done 
and by the time this video is posted it's going to be committed in apache hadoop integration with s3 committers is done and poc for spark is a work in progress which requires some final touches that is going to be included in the future work itself that we need some final touches for Hive and Spark and to really showcase the power of Iostat thread level IO statistics and the implementation in ABFS connector. So the groundwork for ABFS connector is already laid down. It's the Hadoop common work was already done in this PR. S3 is just like an implementation of it. So for ABFS, what we require is grabbing the context in the constructor, aggregating it in the close. That is mostly what would be required. So I, this is the end of the presentation. So thank you for bearing with me. And I want to give a huge thanks to Apache Con organizing team for giving me an opportunity and platform to actually do my first talk. And hopefully it went well. I want to give a big thanks to my team. It, this project wouldn't have been possible without these guys, Steve, Mukun, Shweta, and Rajesh. They really were a big help even throughout my two years career. And it has been a really fun ride with them so far. And uh, so you and it, you can ask me any questions you want. I'll be more than happy to answer them. You can even add some additional queries. If you want to talk after like reading these slides, you can reach out to me on my email, GitHub or LinkedIn. It's fine. I'll be happy to answer anything. Thank you so much for listening.